University of Crete welcomes the 42nd annual meeting of the Hellenic Ophthalmological Society in our hometown and presents Doctors George Kimiones, Vasilios Diakones, Mikhail Grenzelos, Irini Naomidi, and Professor Ioannis Palikaris, all starring in Automated Donor Tissue Preparation for Decement Membrane Endothelial Keratoplasty. Penetrating keratoplasty became the standard of care for optical and tectonic rehabilitation of corneal blindness and visual impairment in the second half of the 20th century. Nevertheless, posterior corneal disorders or endotheliopathies are the reason for about 30 to 50 percent of all corneal transplants today. Any procedure that replaces the endothelium ideally should accomplish the following results. 1. A smooth surface topography without significant change in astigmatism. 2 a highly predictable corneal power, 3. A healthy donor endothelium that resolves all edema, 4. A tectonically stable globe, safe from injury and infection, and 5. An optically pure cornea. Although penetrating keratoplasty consistently can achieve results 3 and 5, the other goals remain elusive despite the surgeon's best efforts. When it comes to managing Fuchs endothelial dystrophies or bullish keratopathy, Penetrating keratoplasty demonstrates a series of disadvantages which surgeons may overcome when using the new endothelial keratoplasty techniques. These disadvantages include wound-related issues after minor trauma, high astigmatism, as shown in the pictures here, suture-related corneal infections, and neurotrophic keratopathy. The evolution from penetrating keratoplasty to endothelial keratoplasty is ongoing, while in the mid of the 20th century, PK was introduced and became the standard of care, and despite its popularity among corneal surgeons, PK continues to have multiple pitfalls. Many years later, in 1998, the idea of performing a suturous endothelial transplantation through a limbal incision was conceived by Meles, and posterior lamellar keratoplasty, PLK, was introduced. The instrumentation and techniques of PLK were modified by Terry and were introduced to the U.S. as Diplamellar Endothelial Keratoplasty, or DILEC, in 2001. The surgical steps involved in DILEC are similar but slightly different compared with those used in PLK. In 2003, Meles reported a technique for stripping decement membrane from the recipient cornea to remove diseased endothelium and thereby eliminate the need for stromal pocket creation. This technique is commonly today known as decement stripping endothelial keratoplasty, or DSEC. While decement membrane endothelial keratoplasty or DIMEC was described in 1998, the feasibility of an isolated decement membrane transplantation was recently confirmed by Studeny in 2007. The main disadvantages of DSEC are interface irregularities, which may decrease best spectacle corrected visual acuity. Furthermore, the corneal graft may induce hyperopia. Decement membrane stripping from the donor graft occurs manually. And even though several different techniques have been proposed, they are time-consuming and they demonstrate surgical difficulties such as decement membrane tearing. For DMEC to be successful, a harvesting technique that provides irreproducible tissue qualities is mandatory in order to avoid early graft failure and secure long-term graft survival. DMEC is an alternative procedure used today for performing endothelial keratoplasties. In our study, we evaluated a mechanical automated technique for preparing a donor decement membrane carrying autologous endothelium for decement membrane endothelial keratoplasty. Ten rabbit corneas were placed on an artificial anterior chamber and mechanical separation of the decement membrane was conducted using a modified epikeratum. Optical microscopy was performed immediately after separation. So, how did you manage to do the separation? Aha! The separation? Well... The rabbit corneal scleral tissue with the endothelial cell layer facing up was placed on a modified barren artificial anterior chamber. The endothelium was stained using trip one blue and intrachamber pressure was controlled by injecting PSS.
why the Bikeraton has two major advantages. One is that no corneal aplanation is necessary prior to separation, avoiding this way endothelial damage. And two, the separated decimate membrane seat overlies on the PMMA block, which further contributes to endothelial cell survival. Here you may see the decimates member in endothelial cell layer flap. Out of the 10 rabbit eyes used in the study, decimate memory separation was achieved in a controlled fashion in 7 of them. As demonstrated by optical microscopy of the specimens, no corneal stroma was attached on the decimate membrane, while the endothelial layer was preserved in several areas, as shown by the arrows in the picture. On the 7 achieved separations, endothelial cells were found vital and attached on the graft, covering 60-80% to of its total surface. In conclusion, automated separation of the decimates membrane can be achieved using a modified epikeratom. Additional studies and improvements of the current technique could further minimize endothelial cell damage, and maybe we are on our way to decimates membrane automated endothelial keratoplasty in the near future. <laughs>